Hi, it's Kev from m &E Services and in this video I'm going to show you what's involved in first fixing for infrared heating. So the property had electric storage heaters. There's no gas in the village so we're limited on options. The property came with about 3.6 kilowatts of solar PV on the roof so instantly I was leaning towards something electric. So there's a lot of hype about infrared heating. So I thought once and for all, we will install it in a property and we're gonna measure. So we're gonna data measure the energy usage over all, all four seasons for over a year. And I'm able to do that remotely um, via an app on my phone. So we'll check back in every three months and compare it to what it would have cost to heat it with gas, which was what it was sold to me um, on the premise of that it's, it's gonna be as cheap as gas. So we're gonna prove one way or another that it is or isn't. So I'm gonna flick the camera around, I'm gonna walk you through the first fix. Okay, so we're upstairs now, and this property is a three bed property. And Again, it was um, told or sold to us on the premise that it's quite easy to install. Um, I've put over, I've installed over 1100 meters of cabling in this property. And I've followed the supplier's instructions on how to wire it. Um, I have a meeting with the NICIC uh, next week because we think there's a more feasible way of wiring it. And, and if that is the case, I'll update this video or make another one um, just to simplify the wiring because at the minute it's extensive. This is the main trunk where we brought um, the cabling and every room has its own supply from the distribution board. So we've got eight zones we've installed. Um, so it's not to every room because in the bathroom, the ensuite and the kitchen, it's got existing underfloor heating and we've tested it and they all work. So it's pointless uh, causing additional costs when we've got sufficient heating in there. So we had to have the floor up throughout the property and this end bedroom, uh, you won't be able to see from the inside but you, there is no loft, ac loft access into the main house. So fortunately, obviously we've got a plaster or ceilings, but fortunately the DB is through behind this piece of stud. So we've, we've cut a piece out and we've managed in this room to cable fish using fishing wires and cutting hatches along the ceiling to thread the cables from one to another. That brings us nicely onto the mats. So um, we, we have to use 2.5 tri-rated single cable uh, to each end of the mat. And each one goes back as a radial back to the control cupboard, what I'm calling the control cupboard because it's going to be light on when it's done. Um, this mat is really light. Um, the single core cables are, you can't really see very well, uh, but the single core cable is just through that hole and it's crimped onto the crimped part of the mat. And then we've done resistance testing before and after to make sure that it's, it's all intact and, and we should be getting the readings, um, we check we should be getting the readings, what we should be. So, then comes the plasterer. So the next stage uh, and the next video will be the plasterer. So basically he will bed each track. So I've, I've lined out each track because I've heard stories that the plaster when he's plastering or plasterers when they're plastering, this mat can go off track. And if you've got several in a room, this has only got three tracks, um, you'll get to one side, sorry about my dirty hands, um, but if you get to one side and you'll run out of room, it won't fit. So I've chalk line exactly as a guide 
to keep him in, keep him straight. So it'd be perfect. Every light fitting, anything on the ceiling, smoke alarms has all got to come down and you can cut the matting, all right, to allow for this, uh, the light cables, etc. Um, and as long as it's with a sharp Stanley blade, I think I'm right in saying you can cut a hole of about a 75 mil diameter. So we haven't had to go that big to get over the cabling. So now we're in the lounge and it's a lounge diner and I've just brought you in here really um, because we've got lots of mats going on in here. But it's the same principle. We took the center of the room, there's one, two, three, four, there's four mats to roll out. Um, I changed the design because originally there was three and I didn't think it would be sufficient. So that got changed. And again, we grid lined in it, grid lined everywhere. So when the plaster starts on Monday, He's got, an, he's got a straightforward job. Then we come to the stats. So we're required to wire 2.5 twin and earth to the stats. And we've got, it's 240 power with no low voltage. So there's two of them. One will carry the permanent live and the other will carry the switch live back to the control room. So there's one stat per zone and each one of those 2.5s go back to the control cupboard and we label everything. So this is hallway one. We can do continuity testing to make sure it's right, uh, but underneath there, there'll be H2. So it just makes it really easy when we second fix. And this is the reason we label every end because as you can see with the 2.5s, which will come from the DB to give us the main power, and then all the stat cabling, and then all the singles, they're not knotted up, they're all labeled, they've had to lay down. Um, but by numbering them and coding them, as you'll see everywhere, everywhere's got a tag. When we do come to second fix this next week, it will be easy. Okay, so this this is it was a uh, close, cupboard, walk-in cupboard if you like. So we've backed the back wall with MDF and we're gonna use 75 to 75 down each side to carry the cabling. So we've got some come from below and some come from above. Obviously for the upstairs rooms, we've had to come over the roof space. So that's it really, um, a hell of a lot of work. That's all I'd say. There's a hell of a lot of work in installing one of these in a retrofit. So don't let anyone tell you any different because it is hard work. We put about six days with two of us in here and we've got to this stage. So um, I'm looking forward to getting the plaster started on Monday. It's Friday today and hopefully by the end of next week they'll be finished. And we can then in the meantime get the cupboard second fixed. We've got to put a separate consumer unit in um for for all the power cabling and then we can data log everything so hopefully um, we'll give it two or three days to dry so hopefully the midweek the week after we'll be running and then what i'll do as a third video is an infrared um, imaging video to show you it turning on and how quick it heats up and see what temperatures we're running at so check back for the next video. See you soon. Bye for now.